Hey there, welcome back to the second video. So in this case, this video, I'm going to show you how to read in the airfoil coordinates, okay, to generate the airfoil. So uh, we're going to use the two uh, geometry, this, the design, the geometry tools that we're using with uh, ANSYS Workbench, that is Design Modeler and Space Queen. So we're going to see how to read in the geometry. But the files, that you are going to rinse, you are going to use the same modeler. The files that you are going to to use, they need to be in this very specific form. Okay, see here that when you have here the the, the hashtag pound or, or number or whatever you call it, these are comments, and then you give your coordinates like this. So you are going to give a group. The first column represents the group. The second one will be will be the the iterator, okay? Coordinate one, two, three, four, and so on. And then you have the coordinate, X, Y, and Z, okay? Then here, see that we have two groups. So you can have one group, two groups, three, four, or five groups, it's up to you. Okay, so if you have two groups, see that you create a second group, and then your iterator starts from one, two, three, and so on, okay? If you have one group, okay, well, you input this one and your iterator is continuous, okay? So this is the specific format, okay? It's very important to, to have it like that. So one thing that pay attention to your decimal separator, okay, in your operating system. So I know what you are using, so it might be a point or a comma, but pay attention that it is sensitive to that okay so in my case i always use in a point so that is my decimal separator in your case look at what you're using in your system also please do not use uh notepad okay the the text editor that comes with uh with windows if you're using windows okay use something more more advanced more professional like notepad plus plus or sublime text both of them are, are free so i use sublime text so i recommend you to use this one it's free okay look at google or yahoo that and you will you will find it but please do not use uh microsoft no notepad because it's going to give you problems okay you can also use microsoft excel but you will need to save this file in cfb format or TSB format that is tat separated value. This is comma separated value. Okay. Uh, and independently of the software that you use to, to manipulate this file, you need to save it in ASCII format. Do not save binary format. Okay. So here, these are the, the, how you need to read the coordinates for ANSYS design modeler. And this is how you need to read the coordinates for a space screen. So in space screen is a little bit different. In the space screens, there are no comments. Okay and all the lines are continuous okay there is no space between lines and if there is any space it means that that is a second group it is equivalent to group here one two if you leave a blank line will tell the the space can will interpret that as a another separate curve okay so in the case of reading airfoil coordinates this is my my recommendation just to read like this okay so you put this one 3d files polyline files and fit files here you, you have an explanation what it's doing but this is the best format to, to read airfoil coordinates or spline coordinates and then you give the coordinates so the format here is a little bit different so the first column is set and then, then x and y okay so be careful is a little bit confusing, counterintuitive, but this is how they did it. Okay, so be careful. Set X and Y. So in, in this case, see that I'm plotting this curve in this plane, in set plane, uh, fix one, it can be zero, whatever you want. And then here you give the X coordinate. Okay, and here I'm putting this blank line and means that this corresponds to a second curve. Okay, so the same applies here that please use notepad or sublime text. Okay, do not use Microsoft notepad. Also look for the decimal separator in your operating system because it is sensitive and always save those files as ASCII. So these are the initial comments okay uh, regarding reading the geometry and now if you download the cases you will see that in, in the folders you will find the, this one naka 12 coordinates and here you have a short uh Walgreens project to read geometries and here you have the coordinates okay so if you enter in the same modeler see that you have a sample files See that you have one with comma and then with point. Okay, in my case, I'm going to open this one with point. See that I'm using uh, sublime text. Okay, and let me open this one. So see that we have two files. In the first file, 
see that we have one single group. This is a closed loop, okay? And see that we have the comments like that. You can have black lines, doesn't blank lines, doesn't matter. And see that group, iterator, X, Y, Z. And you give all your coordinates. So here, this, you're giving the airflow coordinate or the spline coordinate. It doesn't matter. You put whatever you use. And also, in this case, we want a close airflow. So this is very important because also you can, if you have a single group, you cannot repeat coordinates. It will give you an error. And see here that it is commented. Okay. So in theory, this will be the coordinate that will close your airflow. You start there and then you close it there, but you cannot repeat it. It will give you an error. So to close uh, a loop or an airfall or a spline, what you put is like this one zero. Okay. The group and just put zero and automatically it answers the same model will know that it will close it. If you don't want to close it, don't put anything. Okay. Leave it like this. It's not closed. Then you will need to manually modify that. So, and then in the file two, see that now in this one, I have two groups. So first group and second group. When you have two groups, you can repeat coordinates that it is included in a previous one. So see that in this one, you will have zero, zero, you can repeat it. There is no problem because you have separate groups. This is a way I prefer to work, separate groups. Why? Because when you are plotting your results in an airfoil, you're working with airfoil, this will be like top face and bottom face or bottom wall, top wall. So I prefer to work with group. Okay, so this is how I recommend you to work. Uh, for space cleans, it will be something similar. So see here that you have the directory and you have the coordinates there. So here we have three samples. Okay, let me open the three files to see what, what is going on. So in, in, in sample one, see that you read like this and see that you are placing everything in one single plane in this one, one in one. Okay. And you give your, you see that set X, Y. Okay. It's relative easy here. You can repeat coordinates. It's not a problem. Okay. So see that is closing. Okay. In this case should be closing, I think. Okay. Uh, don't recall. Then you move to the second one and the second one, you will see that now I'm splitting this one. See here that you have a blank line. So when you put this blank line means that this is a second curve. So this second curve, see here that you have second curve and first curve. Okay. So it will be top and bottom. And then we have a third one. Okay. Then in this one, I don't recall. Okay. See that uh, in this case, you have two curves, but you will have one curve in this plane located in this set coordinate one, and then another curve in this plane located at two. Okay, so we're going to see what is going on. Okay, so there you will have also the the workbench. Okay, case uh, you feel free to open. So see that you have here uh, design modeler and a space guy. So I will do it from from scratch. But there you have the the coordinates there inside your solid modeler. So I will put here. I will use first design modeler. Okay. Then we're going to move to, to a space cleanse. So design modeler, remember that you can choose a plane to, to sketch and everything. We have used that one, but in this case, we're not going to sketch. We need to read in, read in coordinates. So to read in coordinates, you go here in concept and see here that you have 3d curve. This is the option that you need to use. So see here that you have different options. You select this one from coordinate file. See here that it's going to, to ask you the base plane. So you can sketch in this base planes or you can construct your own reference plane. It's up to you. So you go here and look for that file. Okay. So in my case, uh, let's see, where do I have it? Okay. I need to do it manually here. So da, 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 we'll be here, here. Yeah, over here, over here, here. Okay. And you go here. So oh, sorry, it should be here. So I go here and let me read, read in the first 
okay? The first one is a closed loop, okay? So you read here, very important. So see that already is giving you a preview what is written. See that you choose your plane here and here, very important, please choose at frozen, okay? At frozen, you press generate and see that you have it there. So now that you have this spline, okay, this is a line, okay, you can do your geometry. So you go here, concept again, and you want you want to construct surfaces from this from edge. Okay, select the edge. You have it there, apply, and then generate, and you have the surface. At this point, I think it's self-explanatory. Now you will need to generate your external domain create the boolean and do your mesh. Just to show you, just to make it clear what the next step for you will be. So you are sketching here. So let me create, in this case, let me create a rectangle like this. Put it there, then you can add dimensions. You have it there, oops. And now you go concept, so faces from the sketches. Okay, so you select this sketch, generate, See that now you have two sketches and now you go here, Boolean. You want to subtract, okay? Target body, this one. Tool body will be this one. Apply and generate. And see that you have it there. So at this point, you want to create your body of influence, name it selection, it's up to you. Also, before doing this one is you would like to rotate the airfoil, you will need to rotate it, okay? So here you have your your tree, okay, of all your operations. So it is better to, uh, before doing the Boolean, just do the rotation. So for instance, let me show you, delete. So you can parameterize everything. So now you create, to do that one, you can do here, body transformation, rotate. I would like to rotate this one, okay. Axis selection, okay. Okay, uh, let me give components, so that is okay. Let me put minus one there, and see it there that you have the rotation. Generate, and you rotate it, okay? So I don't want to see this one, okay? Or probably you can suppress that, okay? and. Now you can use your boolean, a like boolean. Okay, you go here, subtract, target body is this. And there, go, and you have. So for instance, see that now you think about your parameterization. So you want it zero degrees, you put it there. If you want it, I know, minus 20 degrees, put it there, your angle. Okay, so I hope you got the, the idea how to do the geometry. Then you do the mesh. We have done that so far. So I'm not going into details for that. So, okay, that was for this case. Okay, we read the, the input file. Okay, but still we need to, to read a second one. Okay, so let me also delete this one. Okay, and delete this sketch. So see that here you have a single loop there is you select the line it's a single loop. So let's read the second line okay just to show you that now it will be separated. So again you go here from coordinates choose your coordinate file so in my case version 2 that I have two groups remember at material here at frozen and generate. So if I hide this one let me suppress see that now you have the top and bottom, top and bottom. And this is the way I like to proceed, okay? Remember from aerodynamics, usually we plug in the top surface, bottom surface, just to visualize better. So it's up to you. However, I prefer to work in this way. So to create the, the, the geometry here is the same way. You need to create a surface here, then the external domain. So just to show you how to create the surface there, surfaces from edges. So select, you need to, to select the axis, apply, and there you have it. Then external domain, rotate, and so on. So this is how you proceed, okay, for the space coins. So uh, for design modeler, okay. So now let me put here, let me, let me put here another one, okay. So here you, you have 
with the original case where I read the geometry. Okay, pretty much the same idea. So let me put here now a new one, and now let's do the same with the space grains. So remain in space grain, we're going to read the files here. You have the coordinates, pretty much the same. And we have three, three, three files there. We're going to see the, the difference there. Again, uh, as you want to see also the difference, I invite you just to play with these options. Also in the help manual, you're going to see a short explanation. So we're here. Let me go here. Escape. Okay, so I want to read that file. To read that file, you have this document and you need to add a new component or, to, or, or, or part to this document. So to do that, you go here into assembly, see that you have file you need to add a file here. Okay, so press here and then look for the location of that file. In this case, it's easier. You can, I can do like this. Okay, and then you can select here. Okay, all supported files. So if I select the first one, I will open. Remember, this one was a single, see that you have a single curve. So see here, you select here, oops, open here. It's a single curve. Okay. Let me hide. Now let me add a new one. So now this one, okay, V2, we have two curves. See that top and bottom. Let me hide. And then let me add the last one. Okay. So here pretty much the same, but see that now I chose different planes. One and two. This is the, co the set coordinate. Okay. So you will see here your coordinates and coordinate. Okay. So basically what I did is that when you create different set, the first column, you're doing this. Now it's up to you to create your geometry. So for instance, you are going to use this. You go here, design, select that, and then select fill. And you have a surface there. And now with this surface, you, create, you can create the external surface and everything like, like we have done so far. Or if you want to create 3D, you can go here and just pull and then you have it and then create your domain for the other case here that you have the two curves it's pretty much the same okay so just select fill and that's all okay so when you hide the curves there and you have the surface there see that your surface is divided you you will have the option to use name selections for top and bottom instead in this case it's everything. It's the whole loop. Okay. So just to show you again. Okay. Let me go pull here. Okay. And see here that now you can select the oh, top and bottom surface. Okay. Instead in the other one, you select here is the whole width. So it's up to you the way you work. Okay. So I, I show you different files. Okay. I recommend you to do this subdivision top at bottom. Okay. It's more practical. Sometimes you want to do your sampling one or the other, or what you want to know what is going on and just in the top. So it's better to do it in this way. And you have also, we show you, I show you the options, how to do it with design model and space screens. I guess you, you, you easily realize that space can is this as well. Okay. This is the way I recommend you is you want to read in geometries and then you, you, you will just need to do the, the, the geometry in the same way we have done so far. So you create your external domain, your body of influence, name it selection, pass to mention, and that's all. So I'm not going to address that. I leave it open to you. In any case, there is in the cases that I'm distributing with you, there is here base geometry mesh. Okay, so you will have the rectangular domain and here you will see the whole workflow, how to generate geometry, mesh, and also case setup. So that's all for this uh, video. Thank you for your attention. See you next time. Bye.